So the other things that are hard for the LPR, so North Carolina actually took a bunch of plates and ran them through to see what LPRs had difficulty reading. If you have a non-reflective plate, it's, almost, it's, in, it's, it's invisible at night, completely invisible, and it's difficult during the day. And non-reflective plates are very uncommon now. And if you decide, you can remove your reflectivity, but this is a crime in California to do this. And if you're in Massachusetts, you will fail inspection. It's one of their checks and you'll have to get a new plate and go through. Low contrast plates, you know, the, 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 the color of the letter is close to the color of the background it has trouble with. Red characters it tends to have trouble with. And if you have three or more stacked characters, because they tend to be small, it tends to miss those. And if you put registration stickers like Missouri, I think, uh, puts a registration right in the middle of the plate near the, near the letters and that tends to screw it up too. So they have trouble with that. And if you have eight digits or more, narrow letters are not great for it. And in, great if you don't have a front plate, you only read half the time. Uh, these, these are the states that have <coughs> the, the greens are the states that have one plate, red or have two. It's, and Nevada is special because they can't, can or can't, depends on, there's some rules for it. Um, and these are the states with legal non-reflective plates that are still, still valid, not very many. Uh, you could also try your manufacturer plates, but then this is, this is the, this is the, the date of the old, of the youngest car you could have. For like California, you, you, you'd only go to 1962 and so that doesn't work either. Um, see a lot of obscure plates. You know, people will use, whether they're doing this on purpose or not is unknown to me, but this, this causes problems. You get salt spreaders, plows, monkeys, more salt spreaders, you know, tailgates. Um, not sure what the front of one of those is, but the bicycle things all makes it impossible to to get a read, but this is, these are all, these can all get you a citation. They tend to be not movie violations, obscure plates. Like in Jersey, it's a hundred dollar fine, no court appearance, you just pay it and move on. Um, or you can get some plates that is not your number. This is University of Michigan plates, <clears throat> but the in leading M on both of those is actually not part of the registration number. They can still get you because they have a full number. It will be eventually figured out. You can do bumper guards if you're parked, especially if you're parked because they, they read them when you're parked. They just drive down the street reading all the plates. Uh, more bumper guards. Uh, but don't drive. I've seen people driving down the road with that covered. That will get you pulled over. And the other, the other worry with these, if you have actually no plates on your car, every jurisdiction, no plates cars are abandoned and subject to confiscation. Uh, you can legally, if you have easy pass in your jurisdiction, you can usually legally obscure your front plate. There's usually a law for it and there is one exception and that's for the external easy pass reader. And this makes it hard to be read on the front. And since it's OCR, what do you think? Do you think CAPTCHA? But don't do this. These are government documents. <laughs> You'll be charged with tampering. So I built a, a camera to, to uh, see what, <clears throat> what the, uh, the, uh, the license plate readers are seeing, but most, most commercial infrared cameras are 850, so I, put, I bought the 750 nanometer LEDs to see what, what showed up with that as well as 850s on it. And it turns out the 735 LEDs, uh, the 420 guys, like this for grow lights, so I'm on some other list now too. <laughs> so it's an old license plate and you can see you can actually buy these things that say, that's the bottom one, that say, hey, no red light camera. You know, you put this on the, put this on the back, it's clear. It basically blocks above 850 nanometers, but since the license plate reader is below that, you can see the first one, it's just regular. This is with this, the, the middle one's actually with the 730 and the one is the 850. So yeah, if it's 850, these kind of work, but they're illegal as well. And you can see what they do on a couple of other plates. Um, 
So, and I ran across this kind of by accident using, using the little camera on plates during the winter time since I'm from a place that salts their roads. And so that's, this is a, this is a license plate with a whole bunch of salt on it. Uh, visibly it doesn't look too much different on the top. This is with the flash and that's with the IR. And that's just a, that's a moderate amount of salt because it looks like the salt absorbs enough of the IR to make it unreadable. And that's with a, a lot of salt. Um, I don't want to go through those. You could get stacked characters. These are states just have stacked characters. You want the one like the New York that has NYP in three because that makes it very difficult for it to read. The Jersey one isn't so great because they're half height characters, easy to detect. Uh, you could also get special characters like hearts and ampersands that are not part of your plate number and they tend to get OCR'd and sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't and only a few states have those. Um, or you could just change your plates as much as possible. So this, this won't uh, avoid detection but you won't have as big of a history. And this is the cost to change your license plate in these states. If it's white, I couldn't figure it out. Like Florida, it's, it's county by county. But one of them, I think it was Mississippi, it's $1.25. You could change your plates every day at lunch. <laughs> if it weren't for the DMV taking four hours. <laughs> So many of them are very reasonably priced, less than 10 bucks. Um, these are the states with eight character plates. Not very many. And that's kind of it for the license plate reader. Then I kind of moved on to the easy pass which is electronic toll, toll collection tags. It's because they're always on and most people just stick them in the window and forget about them. All electronic toll collection in the United States is at 915 megahertz. And there are multiple incompatible protocols all over the place. And these are a couple of them. But it's basically RFID with batteries and some of them don't have them anymore. It's, and so I took mine apart. It has a nice battery in it. Put a switch on it and figured out the, the current draw when it was being read and when it was being not. You shouldn't do this because it's not your property. You have to return these. And so I just basically built a, a a low side uh, voltage detection and when it went off it would just set off the timer and make the cow. It says to moo cow. And the circuit integrated into it, put on off switch on it so I can turn off it while I'm driving and drove around and found where it got red. So this, this place, there's no tolls near here but it would always go off underneath this sign. So I stopped at the side of the road and looked backwards and it's hidden. It may not be on purpose but you can see there's two, there's two readers right behind the sign. They're white, little white boxes are the antennas. And these aren't hidden, they just, they're just out there. And this, this is the access to the Lincoln Tunnel from the Jersey side. If you're up top, you, you're committed to going through the tunnel to pay the toll. And there's three here. And you can see the two up top under the easy pass things. It reads you but that, that's not going to ch charge you the toll. You will get charged the toll at the toll and you also get read right at the entrance of the tunnel. And they also kind of want to know because this is the last exit. There's one right at the light at, at the end at the exit for the last exit in Jersey. So they're, it's just being watched. Uh, you drive around New York City and you'll see, you'll see them hanging from lights. These, and I made it easy to see. And another one. I got tired taking pictures of them. Yeah, these are these are these are from a company called Transcore. Now Transcore can read all the all the all the uh, protocols, including the Easy Pass. Easy Pass was cl a closed protocol until a few months ago, but they had reverse engineered it. But it'll read it'll read any the Sun Pass from Florida, and that's why New York City likes it. They get everybody. But I didn't like, uh, after a while I didn't like that I had to be detected as kind of like a ping. So for me to find out if I was being read, I had to give away my position as well. So I decided to get a 915 megahertz radio, use an Arduino and put it in a tin and with a little, little meter on it and we'll do a proof of concept here. The Arduino one is in the tin on the left, the cow on the left. The one on the right is the one that I had built and will go by the 
in that first. And right under the sign, as, as predicted, it gets red. And just to, we'll go through the we'll go through the Holland Tunnel here. Well, maybe we'll do that again to go through to show that a real easy pass works works just fine. <laughs> so this is this is that 42nd and 8th that first one I showed you I circled the tag and you see the cow in the bottom he's already going off and I did a run down 7th Avenue from 44th Street Times Square area to Madison Square Garden and 34th Street and you'll see how often it gets red. It's going already. It won't move until – it moves only a couple times but as long as the nose is on it's, be, it's being red. This is speed, sped up a bit because it's like a five minute journey to 90 seconds. Still on. I'm in traffic, so it went off a bit. as soon as we turn on 31st Street and, and it remained off until the, the exit for the Lincoln Tunnel which is not a toll – which is not a toll but this is exiting from Manhattan at the, at the Lincoln Tunnel. Um, the New York State Department of Transportation absolutely admits that yes, they do read your easy pass, but I didn't expect it as much at every intersection. Um, so they, they say they do this for travel times, but I've never seen travel times in the middle of Manhattan. <laughs> and what do they do with this data? Since they have your data, do they retain it? Do they give it to the NSA? That's yes, because the New York Times said they did. I don't <laughs> And so what do you do with this? This one's kind of easy. If, if you have, have these things, you, you put it in, in, you put it in the anti-static bag they gave you. It can't be red. Or if you have a sticker, you're going to have to build a Faraday cage around it and put the sticker in that. And I got that idea from uh, a car rental company because they have these little fold-down things so you can just pop it up and it won't be red. And – but if you do that, just like you'll see – you saw it gets red right before the tolls, at the toll and after the toll. So if you're doing that, you – you're not you're not showing up at these other places. You may be a person of interest if you're only seen at the toll. Uh, then we come to your tires. Back in 2000, Firestone had a had a strike, and replacement workers build uh, make their tires, and they tended to blow up. So something got passed called tread, and to do this, they wanted to track who made the tires. And because there was never any – there was no – there's no serial number on tires. They're all molded. The mold from 10 years ago was the mold that's the same today. So you couldn't tell if it was 10 years ago or yesterday they got made. So this came through. So there's a couple of things in your, in, in your wheels. First one is the tire pressure monitoring system. And that's not in the tire. That's part of your rim. It's on, it's on the backside of the – 